Hey guys, this is McCoy Buck with another pro tip. In this tip, we're going to go over the cycle keyframe interpolation. This is an intermediate difficulty level. We're going to cover what is a cycle keyframe, why you should use it, and how to use it in Anime Studio. So what exactly is a keyframe cycle? Well, a keyframe cycle, also known as an interpolation cycle, cycles back to a specific frame number or absolute cycling or back by specified number of frames, which is your relative cycling. So now we know what it is, but what does it do exactly? Why would you use it? So a keyframe cycle, here's the example in the timeline itself of what a keyframe cycle looks like. Now this one's a little bit complicated. I have this character here, this ant character. This is actually one of the first animations I ever made with a walk cycle. And I thought I would try to stunt a four-legged walk cycle. Came out to be a complete disaster, but this is kind of a good example to show you what a walk cycle will look like. So I have the one leg, and as you watch, it continues to move as I cycle through. Continues to rotate and rotate, and the other legs start to rotate as well. He's supposed to look like he's walking, but he's looking more like he's dancing a little bit there. But that is an example of how a cycle is used. You can use it in walk cycles. You can use it in ball bounces. You can use it in anything that you think there's going to be a repetitious movement or cycle happening over and over again. So now we understand why you would use a keyframe cycle. But how do you use a keyframe cycle in Anime Studio? How do you go about doing it? Well, I have a very simple example here. Uh, if you watched my previous tutorial about reverse keyframes, I created a ball bounce. And I kind of used that same technique to create this ball bounce. Let's go ahead and play it out. OK, so you have a very cartoonish ball bounce with a lot of squatching and stretching, probably a little bit too much. But anyway, I want to take this ball bounce animation, and I want it to cycle over and over and over again. Right now, it's just going through once. So how do I create a cycle so that this repeats itself over and over again? First thing that you need to do when you think about creating a cycle is what exactly do I want to cycle? So right here, I have two channels. I have my layer translation channel, which is basically the channel showing that it's going up and going down. And then I have my layer scale, which I use to control my squash and stretch. Now I want both of those to cycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of those channels. You can also select individual channels if you don't want a certain animation to loop. I'll go ahead and right click this, click cycle. Now you have a lot of options here in this little box and it's really handy to be able to figure out how all this works. Um, right here, Currently, we are on frame 16 plus as it shows. So we're not on frame 16, we're on 16 plus. But you can cycle back through those keyframes if you wanted to change your cycle to a certain number of keyframes. But we have it right where we want. And you have the option to do, this is where you can set up your interpolation. Before, we just had it at Bezier. Uh, but I want to change it back to cycle. So that just gives you the option to change that. And then you have your op absolute which cycles back the exact frame. So this would cycle back exactly to frame one, which I don't want to do. And then you have relative to cycle back this many frames. So I have it at 15. It's going to cycle back exactly 15 frames. Now, it doesn't matter if I take and I move this certain animation to another part of my timeline. I'll go ahead and do that. It will also move that cycle with it, which is usually why I go with relative. This is really good for walk cycles when you have arm movements of arms swinging back and forth. And then you have the legs. They're most likely not going to be moving at the exact same speed and at the exact same time. So if you want to offset it a little, let's pretend these were arms and legs. Say these were my arms. And I want to move this a little bit here. This is going to be a terrible example to show for this particular animation. But as you can see, you can offset those current timing for the both of those animations on your cycles. I'm going to go back into this here, pull up my little box here, and we'll go ahead and continue through. So as you can see with absolute, I can't 
take and drag these animations, it's going to take that cycle exactly back to where it was before, which isn't good if I'm trying to move my cycles around, and I'll show you why. It's going to slowly, slowly go into that interpolation, and then it's going to slowly repeat that same thing over and over again, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this, highlight both of these, click Cycle, and I'm going to look at uh, this one right here, which is my relative. So I'm going to cycle back that many frames, 15 in this case. And I'll tell you why in a bit why I cycle back 15 frames instead of 16 or 14. Uh, the next part is your hold duration. So say for instance, I have this ball bounce and I want to hold it for a certain amount of time before the animation then repeats itself, continuing on that loop on that cycle. Well, you can specify here how many frames you want to hold it. Let's go ahead and say 50. I'll close this. So it'll do exactly what you think it is. It's going to go through this whole animation, hold for 50 frames, and then the animation itself will repeat. So let's go ahead and play that. Holds for 50 frames, and then it goes and it continues through the cycle there. So that's if you want to have a hold directly after your ball bounce there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to zero. I don't need any holds. Next, you have your in intervals. This is more for timing of your animation. Typically, you would set your animation on, by default in Anime Studio, on ones, but you can set so that each keyframe is held for two frames. So let's go ahead and set this to two. You might see a bit of a difference. It's gonna be cartoons are more set on twos or fours, depending on the cartoon. Okay, so as you can see there, it kind of has more of a cartoony type of fill there. Um, and you can also go through and you can set what your timing is right here. This is your interval. So I usually, in this case, would have mine on ones, okay? Quicker animations you wanna have on ones, other animations, it's okay, you can have those on two and such. And then you have your label. So say I want to label these blue, these keyframes right here, I can do that as well, okay? So now they're blue, showing that I have a cycle going here. You can color code your keyframes. Okay, so now let's talk about why I set my keyframes back to frame one in this in this instance, or set it back 15 frames. Well, the whole reason why I did that is when you think about a cycle, you want it to be repeating or looping, almost thinking of like uh, an audio track. It just loops and it continues to repeat on itself. You want the same for your animation. So in this case, I have my ball starting here at the bottom and it's in a squished position. So see that it's in a squished position here. I'm gonna to go to the very end keyframe and it's the exact same animation. Basically what I did is I took this animation, I had it go up and then just like I showed my other tutorial, I copied and I pasted these keyframes, I reversed them and I do the exact same animation for movement for the layer trend translation going down. However, as you can see there, I did a little bit more refining for the squash and stretch going back the other direction. It's actually a pretty sudden animation. I wouldn't recommend doing it exactly right there. That's probably a little bit better. Okay. So during these keyframes here inside of this cycle, you can edit this as much as you want. Anything you do outside of it, is basically, basically going to stop your animation. So I'm gonna set two keyframes right there. So say I have this continuing to animate and cycle, and it's gonna cycle again. To stop your cycle, you basically create new keyframes. So in this case, I created two new keyframes, and I can have these two keyframes looking however they want. I can make it just blow up if I wanted to. So it's bounce, bounce, and it blows up, maybe it hits the screen or something, I don't know. So the whole reason I had it repeat back on frame one, and it's not necessarily on frame one, it was back, I think it was 13 frames or so, is because this animation right here is going to be this exact animation or keyframe right here. And then what I'll have it do is I'll just have it continue in its cycle. So it's gonna hold that frame, 
it's going to it's going to loop back to that frame. And actually you can do this. I'll use another example. If you wanted so that it doesn't hold for those two particular frames, I could select this back to 14. So when it goes to the next frame, it goes exactly to this animation here. So I'll have it loop exactly to here. But I want to make sure that as it's coming down, I at least have this keyframe exactly as this keyframe. Okay, so it's totally how you want to set your keyframes. Again, if I go to my cycle, and let's say I only want to cycle at 10 keyframes, now we're going to see a better example of what this is, is doing exactly. So it's essentially cycling back to this point in time. So frame 35 is what's being repeated after here. And it's going to go up, repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, so I'd set this either on the same keyframe, if you wanted to hold that animation out for, it's kind of like holding your duration, uh, except you can hold it um, kind of manually there. Uh, you can just set that back to 13 or 14 in this case, and that's gonna be exactly where we want it. Now, a common mistake that is made with cycles is a lot of times people will take and they'll highlight the whole entire thing and then they'll go to cycle. Now, there's an issue here. What's going on is you're repeating multiple animations, multiple keyframes, and I'll show you what it looks like. Doesn't, doesn't look good because basically what you did is you took and you highlighted every single keyframe and you created a cycle for it. Whereas all we want to do is just repeat the whole entire keyframe um, animation here with one keyframe so it cycles back from that one keyframe and it goes through the animation cycles back to the one keyframe and goes through the animation again one last thing that you can do is you can change the timing of your animation because i have it set on relative and not absolute like i said i can take and i can move this animation by holding clicking the whole entire animation highlighting all the keyframes i can hold alt and click and drag out the keyframes thus elongating that animation. So if I want to make it really slow, make it look like it's bouncing on the moon or something like that, I'll go ahead and hit play. And as you can see there, it's doing a lot slower animation. Same thing, if I wanted to move it in a little bit closer. Oh, as you see, saw there, that probably wasn't good because it overlapped those two keyframes. Okay, so right about there. It's a quicker animation. So that is basically the keyframe cycle in Anime Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in other videos. Also, be sure to join the Anime Studio Pros Facebook group, a group I created for you to learn, share, and collaborate with other Anime Studio animators. I'll see you later.